Okay, last video of this module. We now go a bit into security and programming. How do we program in a secure way? And the issue we're having here is that uh, the answer depends very much on what programming language you use. Certain languages have uh, more things that might be relevant, like me uh, memory management or direct access to the operating system. Uh, it depends what kind of frameworks or libraries you use in your programming, because again, they could have specific ways of handling security, they could have specific uh, vulnerabilities. So, depends again here. It does depend quite a lot on what domain you're in, whether you are implementing an airplane or a web service or an information system. Uh, and very often these things, of course, interact. In certain domains, you have a uh, preference for certain languages, for certain frameworks, you have specific problems. So, this leads to that advice for programming is very often specific. So, you can't give general advice saying this is how you do secure programming, but you need to look up how do I do secure Python programs if I implement something in Django for a web-based information system. So there might be very specific uh, guidelines for that. And very often you have these domain or language specific things that pop up somewhere. For example, uh, some of you might be familiar with the OWASP Top 10, so that's a non-profit organization looking at web security and they publish the OWASP uh, Top 10 list of the most common uh, web security issues. They also have a list for mobile applications, so advice specific for these kind of domains. Um, and they usually don't talk much about the language in the framework, they try to be general enough. If you then use a specific language, you might have different ways of addressing these problems. Uh, a similar one that is maybe not as known uh, is the meter uh, attack list, which is spelled in this funny way. This is a US nonprofit organization that among other things deals with cybersecurity and they also have a they have like a matrix of different attacks or threads that typically happen uh, independent of language framework and domain and you can basically look these up and you can look at what are successful attacks that have happened maybe some information of how to avoid them so these kind of guidelines exist uh, and then there are specific uh, programming guidelines so if you look at for example secure programming uh, for C, you will find websites, you'll find resources that give you specific advice for C. You can do the same for Python. There are some things that are uh, fairly general, that are fairly common. I'll just li list them here. And then how exactly you do that or whether they're really relevant depends again uh, on your context. So a common principle is the visibility of uh, your assets or your data and what you should always try is to make it as limited as possible. If you don't need to be able to read or write variables from outside a class, well then don't make them visible. So that's a general principle. If something should not be accessible from outside a component, well then don't put it into the interface, hide it. So limit, encapsulate your data and your operations as much as needed, basically. Um, always check inputs. So some of the most common attacks have to do with user input being prepared in a special way that something goes wrong in the application. So there are lots and lots of different uh, attack scenarios around this. Probably the most uh, well-known one is SQL injection. So in a web system, you insert special database code that then uh, basically leads the program to give you back some kind of information that you shouldn't have access to or maybe modify the information. Uh, and this applies to, I think, almost every single context where you have some kind of input coming in. Either the user directly writing something like the username or you're reading files that a user has access to or anything like that. So as soon as something comes from the outside that you don't have control of, check whether it's correct or not. Uh, another one is handle all exceptions. So don't just assume that certain exceptions don't happen, but make sure you have exception handlers so that if something ever goes wrong, 
there is sort of a fallback. Your application doesn't just crash. So that's uh, another really important uh, thing. Now, uh, you want to provide restart capabilities in many cases. Uh, so many applications are, of course, not supposed to crash, but it might still happen. Uh, and then there should be ways to restart this automatically or manually. <laughs> it should be feasible somehow that the system restarts uh, so that it's not made unavailable. Remember, one of the security dimensions we're looking at is availability. So you don't just want to have something crashing and it's gone, but you should have some way uh, to restart. Another very common source of attacks is uh, overflow attacks. So you should always check the boundaries of your data. For example, if you are expecting an integer, a number as an input, integers are bounded. We don't have infinite numbers in the computer. So it's very common to provide some kind of attack uh, where a very high or very low value is provided. And then if you do some kind of calculations, it overflows and suddenly instead of being very large, the value is very low. Uh, and depending on what you do with this value, this can have consequences. Uh, so a case, this was not an attack, but a, a very popular case of an integer overflow that, that lead, led to uh, catastrophic effects uh, was the, the Ariane 5 uh, accident where the, the rocket exploded because uh, the uh, acceleration value overflowed. So suddenly from a very large acceleration it went to a reverse uh, and that caused the spaceship, the rocket, to basically break apart because of the forces. So overflow attacks, very common, uh, check those. Uh, those are sort of uh, general rules that apply to almost all languages. And as I said, there can be concrete guidelines. Uh, I just have a handful of them uh, for Python. They are rather high level, but it's nevertheless something you might want to look at. So in, for example, the Python case, Many things we're talking about are, uh, for example, the, the version of Python that in older versions in 2. Dot something, there were certain uh, errors, certain vulnerabilities that related to the interpreter. So the tool, the uh, command line tool interpreting, running your code had vulnerabilities that could lead to, for example, overflows. Uh, and that's why one of the things is always check the versions of what you're actually running. Are there any security issues? Uh, it's not just people for fun updating versions and coming up with new versions of, for example, Python, but there might be security reasons for that. So keep track of the versions. Um, try to avoid the assert statements unless you're doing testing or you want to provide some kind of debug information. But people in the past have used this uh, to, for example, check authentication. So assert that the user is an administrator, for example. The problem is that the assert statement is ignored if the debug flag is removed. So if your code goes to production mode, uh, if that's set in the, in the interpreter, then the assert statements are simply ignored, which could have uh, severe consequences. Talking about checking the input, uh, issues are, for example, if you use uh, tools like Jamal or Pickle, uh, so you read in configuration files, you deserialize uh, input files, and if these files come from a user, theoretically, uh, they could put some kind of code in there that's being executed. So you need to take care when you use these files from outside that you read them in the right way and check that it's actually correct code and it's not an attack. Uh, so that's something to uh, be very careful about. And then finally, a popular case, not only in Python, also very common in web frameworks like Node.js, are the dependencies. So nowadays we have so many nice libraries and frameworks that we use, but we shouldn't forget that these are written by someone else. And theoretically, someone can put in a vulnerability there, intentionally or not. Uh, and of course, dependencies themselves have dependencies, so this can be a trickle-down effect. So essentially, if you are having something that is security relevant or safety relevant, check 
your dependencies, check the versions of them, check their history, are they having a large user base, are they having a large deployment base, is it trustworthy, um, but also are you actually downloading the right ones. Uh, do stuff like check the, the checksums of these. Very often if you download something there is uh, a hash code that you can check whether you're downloading the right thing or someone has replaced it and you're accidentally uh, downloading something that has backdoors built in. So these are some uh, security specific guidelines for Python. Um, what happens with these guidelines and these more general guidelines is that very often in companies they are included in the coding guidelines. So it's not only about we are indenting our code by one tab, uh, we are using camel case for formatting our functions, but it's also things like that. Whenever you introduce a dependency, check this, this and this. Uh, only use this version of Python to run the code. Don't use assert statements. And some of these things, like the assert statement or maybe other insecure statements to load JAML, you can automatically check with, for example, linter tools. So it's not like you have to have a checklist where you go through this, but many of these things you can actually uh, also check automatically. So this is usually where it comes into place in companies programming guidelines that are then specific to the language you're using, the frameworks you're using, and the domain you're in. So this concludes the security lecture, the security module. Uh, I hope this gave you some kind of input on top of the typical very low level advice that you get for, for example, web programming. Uh, but it gives you a bit of the bigger picture what kind of dimensions there are in security when you look at applications and what you need to consider.